Hey guys, so today is a bit of a different video. I don't have my car with me today. I have a very special car, something that honestly I'm normally not too into. I don't know much about it. I actually had to do some research about this car. But I have an E36 M3 lightweight. I believe only 126 of these were ever made. Pretty much this is 200 pounds lighter than the regular E36 M3, completely stripped out of the inside. No AC, no radio, more aero, just looks crazy. And yeah, these things are super rare. Today I'm gonna drive it, I'm gonna spend the day with it, probably I think until tomorrow morning. And again, I don't have much experience with these older BMWs. I don't know much about them. Let's see what I think of it. Okay, so I have been driving this car for about an hour and a half, two hours. And it's really not what I expected. Like, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest. Uh, I didn't know if it was gonna just feel like a super, super crazy light car, or kind of just feel like a regular M3. And it's kind of neither. I mean, it, it does feel like like an improved version of, of like an M car. Um, but like, honestly, I'm surprised for a 1995 car, everything here feels so well built. And I don't know if it's just because the car is well built or this is a 15,000 mile car. So it might just be because the car is that good. But everything feels very well made. Uh, obviously it's kind of tough that there's no uh, AC and radio, especially AC today is super hot outside. But driving wise, I mean, the way the car handles is, it almost feels, I haven't driven that many like older BMWs. I can, the only one I can compare it to is an E46 M3. And it almost feels like a just 25% lighter E46 M3. It just wants to kind of get thrown around a little bit. Like, it's not so fast, I guess, but it feels super fast. It feels like momentum's really pushing the car. And just around corners, yeah, it just, it loves carrying the speed. The, the crazy part about this car is that this is from an era I feel like where kind of luxury cars are luxury cars because of their build quality, not because of the features and gadgets. Because at the end of the day, this doesn't have more gadgets and features than a Honda. But the way the car is built is just way better than any regular car at the time. Um, and again, these are super rare, 126, but also because it's built off a regular production car, everything can be kind of perfected but oh, the way it carries speed is just like again, it really doesn't have a lot of power but it just carries speed and you feel like you're driving something a lot more powerful than what this actually is um but yeah the, the crazy thing about this car is it's just the little things that make the car feel special so i've never honestly driven any, i've never been inside any a regular e36 m3 I don't know if the mirrors, for example, are the same, but here there's these super small mirrors that are in a weird angle and just, again, doesn't feel like any other car. You have the big spoiler behind you, you see like all the, like, the M stitching on the steering wheel. You have these different cloth seats that come on the, on the lightweight. But it's also just kind of knowing what you're in, which I guess maybe back in the day when this car came out wasn't a factor. But now knowing how iconic the car is, you like, I feel like I'm driving a car that when I'm older, this thing might be like a million dollar car. There's a very good chance because I feel like most people my age that are getting into cars are very into BMWs, new BMWs, old BMWs, but these are the types of cars you're gonna be chasing. And a car this rare, I think this could be a million dollar car one day and it's just crazy that you're driving a car that you kind of know in the future gonna look back and be like, holy shit, when I was young, I got to drive this. Like you can kind of, it's gonna be kind of a story. Okay, so, we're driving downtown right now, and honestly, I'm super surprised about how easy this car is to kind of move around downtown, see out of, and honestly, I thought the car is actually gonna get a lot of attention because nowadays, like, I feel like all car people are into BMWs, especially older BMWs. Honestly, it doesn't draw that much attention at all. I can kind of get by under the radar, and it's not too loud, so you just don't get any unwanted attention. Um, but yeah, the honest, like, the, the worst part is, though, is that there's no AC, and, you know, as much as that's nice and all on the track, like, on a nice summer day, you're gonna wanna take the car out. It's gonna be brutal, so you kinda have to be prepared. But this car would be the best car, you know, great April car, beginning of May, great fall car. But like, it is like, insanely hot. It, like, if you're on a highway, you get some wind in, but you can't drive this car with the windows up. There's no way. So the thing is, a lot of these cars I'd say probably most of them got into collections and got into situations where they don't actually get driven. So most people are not going to see one of these on the road, you know, 
potentially in their life because they're like yeah they're all a part of some big collections and I kind of didn't like that before especially when I started driving and I really like started feeling and it's a really good driving car easy to drive but I kind of get the point because prices of these cars now are 120 150 thousand dollars and it's not that expensive because I do honestly think that in the future the car is going to be worth potentially a million dollars in 20 30 years but the driving experience is definitely not $150,000 driving experience. It's a great seventy, sixty thousand driving experience, but $150,000, it's not it. So yeah, I, I, I don't think it's a $120,000, $150,000 driving experience, but to be fair, I don't think any BMW M car, unless it's really brand new with the brand new prices, is, is like should be that. Um, but the other thing is, like again, that doesn't mean the car is not worth $120,000, $150,000 when you come out of the car and you look at the car parked it's not in a regular e36 you can just tell like you step out of this car and you see it's not just the sticker like the you know the checkered flags or any of that it's the spoiler and the the lip you can just tell this car is something special and i think the reason a lot of people just kind of park them and leave them in the collection because i do think this is worth hundred fifty thousand dollars to put in your collection and to look at it and i think it's gonna be worth significantly more because of the history behind it the kind of the cult following this type of car has you know if this is a really like the definition of if you know you know you know if you don't really know cars you might might think i just slapped some stickers on the car and a spoiler and that's what this car is but if you really know what it is and you know how rare the car is you're gonna freak out and it, it does look very special the experience is definitely a great driving experience but i think a big part of the car is what it is like just the heritage of it what it looks like but in modern, you know, it's a 240 horsepower, which was a lot back in the day. And honestly, it feels a lot for 240 horsepower. It feels very quick, but it's not like you drive something like a modern Porsche, or even a more modern BMW, and it feels a lot more solid, a lot more kind of tight. This is still feels a little bit loose, but it just you just know you're driving something so special, and that does enough to get your driving experience to be special enough where you can justify a price like that and honestly yeah, it's gonna go a lot higher in my opinion it's, it's kind of crazy because i thought i'm actually gonna get a lot of reactions from this car i thought there's gonna be enough people out there to kind of know what this car is but so far the whole time i've driven it i had one guy in an m3 give me a thumbs up that honestly i don't think he really knew what it was he just saw an older m3 with a wing and stuff i had one guy on the highway in a gti that freaked out and definitely knew what it is other than that literally nobody knows what this is it just they think it's just like a modified regular E36 M3 if they even know what that is. Okay, so we are going to pick up Zach. We have Jamie behind us in Jason's GT2 RS. So yeah, we're going to pick up Zach. We'll see what Zach wants to say about the car because I think he knows a bit more than me about the car. And then we're going to line them up in Yorkville. And I actually kind of am interested to see if car spotters want to go for the GT2 RS or for the E36 lightweight M3. Okay, so we just picked up Zach. Uh, Zach, you've yeah. been in the car for about a kilometer. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of it so far? Um, well, we haven't really done anything, so it's a car. <laughs> uh, no, but these are really cool cars. Um, you know, uh, all these limited M3s are pretty sick. Uh, this was kind of like what like we couldn't get the the gt we yeah, couldn't get the well, m3 yeah, gt kind of, so then it's not our budget yet no no but i mean like north america couldn't get an m3 yeah. gt so like this was the response to it so yeah. it has like the arrow and like the lightweight stuff but it didn't have the uh gt engine that's the biggest criticism with this yeah. car it doesn't have the extra horsepower but these are significantly more rare i think right uh yeah i believe so i don't have my fucking production numbers on but uh, i know it's 126 of these I'm 126 not sure okay i want to say uh, gt's 150 i'm just gonna throw that out there I believe oh so it's it not far not far off um and yeah no the, i i think it's really cool like it got that hate for not having the extra power but i i don't know i think it looks cool um i like that they made the effort to sell them here yeah uh, even though they didn't really have to uh and yeah it's pretty sick out of all the e36s it's pretty cool yeah like what, what i was kind of saying about the cars i feel like like you know they're selling for like 120 150 but i feel like it's not the driving experience that brings a 120 150 but it's when you come out of the car and you look at this car, it doesn't look like just a little bit of a better M3. Like it looks like a very, very special car. Yeah, it, it looks, looks like a totally. collection piece that's definitely worth the 120, 150 thousand. Totally, and like uh, 
there's like a bit of notoriety with it with like Paul Walker owning yeah. seven of them or yeah. whatever and um, he always saw them as being collectible and uh, so he hoarded them early on and I don't know I think it's cool like but any M3 nowadays is kind of nuts you yeah. know like yeah the, the new ones are like 130 are, grand for a brand new one yeah but the values for old M3s are just wild yeah um, but I've always liked it I think they're cool you got like the carbon and the really cool like inserts on the seats and stuff very yeah. M style uh, I like it I think it's wicked okay. yeah super cool but the uh, uh, what are the other M3s for E36 it's like the GT and like the Canadian edition is that a, I honestly don't know much about them at all. Oh, dude, the Canadian edition is actually wild. They made 40 cars, and they have like some exclusive colors, like there's like yellow, purple, like really cool colors, and they have the Euro spec engine. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. and they're a little bit more low key. They have like the uh, don't have a big wing. Uh, aside from the funky colors, it's kind of hard to set them apart. Yeah. Um, but they're significantly rarer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they have that cool Euro spec engine, which is sick, so those are sick. Nice. Yeah, but I like these, they're good. Minus the no AC. Yeah, I feel like it's a, it's a great October car. <laughs> yeah, it's a good October car. I'm getting on here. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's fine. So yeah, we're parked, we got Jason's GT2RS, E36 lightweight, and the Leapers are at the E36. Oh, no, never mind, both cars, so far it's tied. Like his fucking dream car. Yeah. Here's an example. There's a guy right there checking out the M3. Doesn't even look at the GT2 RS. Because if you know, you know. You're not going to see another M3. Yeah, so GT2 RS has like literally no crowd around. And everybody just kind of looking at the E36. Like people have been coming non stop to see the car. Like it's pretty crazy. So a little out of place, but I brought the lightweight to a PTN Porsche meet. Uh, but yeah, a little bit out of place, but honestly, a lot of people have been giving this car a lot of attention here in New York. But yeah, pretty cool. Let's walk around some of the cars, just see what's here. Potentially, my favorite car here is this .1 orange GT3 RS. You really don't really see, you don't see GT3 RS 997s in general a lot, but especially not the point ones. Pretty cool move, and then yeah, GT3 behind it. Cool green target next to this. GT3, the guy drives the like hard as hell, respect it. Red GT3 as well. And a 0.1991 GT3 RS. Same thing, you'd always see those a lot when they came out. They're kind of everywhere, the orange and the purple. They're never around anymore, but he's driving the 0.2s, and I actually think these are a little bit cooler just because how much more red they are. Honestly, one of my favorite cars here. Like, I really wish I would have got these. When I first started looking at cars, these were like 120 grand, and now they're like well over 200 grand. Doesn't matter the mileage. It's badass. Pretty much my favorite version of my favorite generation of 911s. These things are so good. Oh, that guy's still blocking me. Okay guys, so I have had this E36 M3 lightweight for about 12 hours and I picked it up kind of first thing in the morning, it's almost midnight now. And I really like this car, but it's not really because of the driving experience. I feel like the driving experience is kind of like your regular, you know, M BMW from like, you know, our late 90s, early 2000s with, you know, a little bit lighter, a little bit more nimble. So it is a little bit more fun, but I don't think it's about the driving experience. So again, my biggest takeaway from this car was a lot of cars, especially newer cars that you buy, that you spend the 150, 200,000, whatever on, their $200,000 driving experiences, the $150,000 driving experiences. This is not a $150,000 driving experience, which is what these cars go for, but it is a $150,000 car. 
which I think is a big difference. I think this is a car you drive once in a while and you do enjoy it. It's not like it's a boring car to drive in any way and it's a great car to drive, but this is the type of car that if you grew up liking these cars and you have a collection, this is a must have in the collection. It's one of the most rare, most significant M cars ever made and it just looks insane. And I feel like as an art piece, as a part of a collection, as kind of a part of history, this is definitely a $150,000 car right now and I think in the future it could even be a million dollar car. Million dollar cars are not always the greatest cars to drive. I mean, yeah, I know they say Kuntas are good to drive and these cars are good to drive, but realistically, there's a lot of Porsche 911s and stuff that are better. But you buy cars because they make you feel something, because they make you feel special. This car, for the certain type of person that grew up liking M cars and BMWs, it's just gonna make them feel special. And you buy this car because you made it in life and you wanna buy it where your dreams were and this would have been your dreams. And in that way, it definitely makes it right and it definitely does kind of fit in the category of a $150,000 car. So I am pleasantly surprised and even though these cars aren't as meaningful to me and that's not totally my type of car, I 100% get why people spend the money on them. I think it's definitely worth it. And I think it's a very special car. Tomorrow I'm gonna to wake up early in the morning, I'm gonna take it for another little bit of a drive before I bring it back. But I'm pleasantly surprised with this. Uh, maybe I'll get a little bit more into BMWs now, but it's such a special car and you see the people that know it, the way they react to it, you know it's just something special. But yeah, it just looks so much more aggressive with these bumpers and it's the little things that make a big difference. Something, something like these racing lines right here, you drive downtown and you see the reflections off the buildings and you just see that red and you just know with the spoiler and everything you're driving something very special and people look at it and a lot of people even if they know about bmws they might not know what this is but they're all very intrigued this car turns heads like no other car we went to a porsche for me today and this was one of the mo the cars that brought the most attention everyone wanted to see it everyone everyone wanted to know about it because you just never see these and there's a reason why they're always in collections the reason why they're always in collections is because People that buy them, buy them for the reason that I said so. They don't buy it for the driving experience, they buy it to complete a collection, they buy it so they can know that they own a piece of history, a car that they might have grew up dreaming about, might not still live up to date with current cars, but it just makes you feel special enough just knowing you have one of these around you, that it's worth the price tag. Okay, so that's about it for my 24 hours with the E36 M3 Lightweight. I'm about to go return it right now. Again, I'm not, a big old BMW guy, but I'm not gonna lie, I really, really enjoy this car. It's, obviously the driving experience is very good, but a big part of it is knowing that you're driving something special. It just, like, someone my age who grew up, like, you know, in the 2000s, this was kind of like looked on as one of the kind of best M cars, best looking M cars. So it's very cool to know you're driving something like this and it just, it makes it a part of the experience but it is a very fun car to drive, especially now, like it's really early in the morning, I just took it out for like a morning drive. And it's very satisfying to drive, it's just kind of you with the car, there's not really assists or anything, no radio, no nothing, just you driving a car, no distractions. And honestly, it's something kind of nice because nowadays all the cars have all the gadgets, all the technology, all the features, and it kind of distracts you from everything. This is just kind of a very pure driving experience. Okay, so just because I'm not sure if I did or didn't do a walk around in this car, so I'll just show you guys by the factory. Checkered flags right here, it's got a different lip. Looks a lot more aggressive in the front. It's got the BMW Motorsport wheels. Very, very, very cool. Another, the checker flag are in this corner and on the opposite corner. It's got the factory spoiler, so this spoiler actually didn't come installed on the cars when you first got the cars. You actually, it came kind of in the trunk with the letter from BMW and you had to kind of install it yourself. Yeah, this car looks very, very, very cool. And it's got a very simple, just kind of only things you need in the interior. So it's got the cloth seats, radio delete, no AC, just you, gearbox, steering wheel, and that's about it. And a lot of like 1990s carbon fiber actually. It's pretty cool because back then really n almost no cars had carbon fiber. But yeah, that's my my time with the e36 m3 so if you guys like this video make sure to subscribe i'm going to try to do a lot more videos like this maybe take out a lot of other cars um anything from supercars to you know bmws to you know anything i can kind of get my hands on so yeah subscribe and i'll definitely try to post as much as i can this summer hopefully i can do more than once a week but yeah i'll see you in the next video